Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. What took hours to destroy will now take days and weeks to clean up. Neighbors banding together as people who lost so much in the floods work to pick up the pieces. But the trouble is not exactly over yet. And this is why right here a fresh line of rain marching into the area right now and it's only going to make things harder. But we're going to begin with breaking news that has been unfolding over the past 24 hours along the Southfield Freeway at Outer Drive. MDOT now says the pump there just could not keep up with the extreme amount of rain. Yeah, these are live pictures from Sky 4 over the area right now. And MDOT confirms pumps are running at full capacity, but it's going to take a while before they get all of that water out, as you can imagine. Stay up. We'll stay on this and bring you new updates as we get them. Meanwhile, we're seeing acts of generosity all over town as neighbors help neighbors clean up this massive mess. But as we sit here at this hour, the flood threat is still far from over. We've got our team of reporters fanned out all over town, tracking the trouble and the huge amount of work that's yet to be done. Tim Pamplin is along the mouth of the Detroit River on the city's east side. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is down river in Taylor, and our Sean Lay is in Dearborn Heights. We're going to get to all of them in a minute. Let's start things off here, though, at the 5 o'clock hour with Ben Bailey tracking that fresh round of rain and then uh, work our way down the line. Hey there, Ben. Kim and Devin, you know, the data is telling us encouraging news, but I know it is going to be tough to sleep tonight for a lot of folks who are in some of the hardest hit areas. Let's start with the flood watch, which is in effect for most of the area from Oakland and Macomb County South. This is through Friday morning for the potential of more flooding. The radar showing that everything right now is fairly light and widely scattered and it's moving. It's not sitting over the same spot, so that's good news. Also, when we look at more of the rain that we've been tracking down here to the south across parts of Indiana and Ohio, this stuff looks a lot lighter than what we were looking at earlier. And the computer models are also telling us the same story. The actual amounts of rain for the vast majority of the area should be less than a half an inch. Now, we are still concerned with the possibility of a couple thunderstorms popping up across the area that may drop up to an inch of rain, and it's really impossible to tell when or if those storms will be able to fire. There's not a lot of energy for these storms to work with. So again, most of what we're going to see is fairly widespread rain. The bad news is a lot of it's coming overnight after midnight when a lot of folks are in bed. So we're going to continue to track that as we get through the night. Tonight's rain, of course, is not going to help clean up the hardest hit areas like Dearborn Heights. Our Sean Lay is there where neighbors are banding together and trying to get it done, Sean. Good evening, Ben. About 100 homeowners here really in some trouble. Yesterday, about this time, I was right here on Local 4 News. The water was about at this level. You can see the street now. The water is gone. Here's what's taking its place. Follow me this way. Everything that people own in their basements, all their effects, here's some children's toys, here's some artwork here, all being brought out on the curb up and down the street, as you can see, and this cleanup has only just begun. This Dearborn Heights neighborhood was underwater 24 hours ago. Right now, it looks and sounds like this. First things first, clearing vehicles that washed into the middle of the street. When we saw Mohammed Mogni yesterday, he was in a boat. Now he is here trying to help his neighbor. Her truck got stuck in the flood as she was trying to get her sick kids to the hospital during the height of the storm. Yeah. And so you were saying, don't take the truck. I told the guy, don't take the truck. I mean, she had nobody here. And the truck will be here when that mom returns. Around the corner, Shane Durkee is hoping for the sound of his car starting. No such luck. But he is rolling up his sleeves and starting the long process of cleaning up. We clean up as best as we can and we kind of lick our wounds. Other signs of hope here, a dog we saw in a rescue boat is back home. And then there was Riley McClendon. Yesterday you were right here and the water was right up to about here. Absolutely. What's it like now? It's beautiful that it's gone. You know, it's refreshing that we no longer have to deal with this water. McClendon has plans for his heartbroken neighbors. He has a job that will help. Actually, no, I'm an ice cream man. He has an ice cream truck. Detroit Scoops. Ice cream for everyone, helping everyone heal after the storm. You make people happy. I do my best. We certainly would like to come right back here as Mr. McClendon drives his ice cream truck to the kids and all the homeowners here 
once everything gets cleaned up. The city here in Dearborn says Dearborn Heights, that's exactly what they want to see. Everything out on the curb. Pickup is Saturday. They want everyone to contact their insurance companies while they work with the state on some possible disaster relief. Coming up at 6 o'clock, yesterday we told you about a young mom here who was having a horrible time. Her name is Tori. We caught right back up with her. We'll tell you Tori's story on day two of the floods live at 6. Let's get right out to Tim Pamplin. He is watching the sandbagging effort that's on the east side of town. Uh, Tim, take it away. Yeah, Sean, it's uh, quite a sight to see. You saw community helping community over there in, uh, in Dearborn Heights area. This is uh, down in uh, Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood. Sandbagging efforts well underway. One community just up the road from here issuing this emergency declaration. Take a look. Massive pumps churning out the flood waters along Lake St. Clair. This one in Harrison Township. Macomb County officials say they're doing their job. For now, tens of thousands of residents in the flood waters way as the lake levels continue to rise. The Army Corps of Engineers predicting up to a 12 inch crest in the coming weeks. If it goes up another foot, it's, it would be completely over. You, it would be over this road. So Lake St. Clair, here we are. Lieutenant Olds of the Macomb County Sheriff's Marine Division, they've sandbagged their facility. Encourage you to do the same. If the township in your area has made stuff available for you, take advantage of that. You're going to need it. Down the lakeshore a few miles, an emergency declaration hot off the printer. We declared a high water emergency here in the city of St. Clair Shores. That emergency declaration states if you have inadequate sea walls and don't build them up, immediately the city will do it and charge you. When your property is low, the risk you're taking is not just yours. If it jeopardizes the health and welfare of the public, we have a right to step in and take care of that on an emergency basis. Now, I heard that the uh, mayor of St. Clair Shores is going to issue some advice later on this evening. There's going to be big uh, get-togethers in the community to simulate what's going on here, of sandbagging operations. Now, they're getting ready here. What's happening if you've got your trouble already on your doorstep? Hank Winchester, help me, Hank, is down in Taylor. What do you say? Good evening, Night Cam. We're here just off Telegraph Road near 94. Good news scenario, at least for right now. Take a look over my shoulder. You can see part of that sign that says water over the road. Well, the good news is the water has now receded. The bad news is yesterday, a lot of people were driving through flooded roadways. And as you can imagine, it caused a lot of damage to vehicles all over this area. Cars like this one now a common sight down river. This at 2019, just under a thousand miles ruined by the water. When you're seeing a lot of standing water, you need to drive around that. Mark Len is with Taylor Chevrolet. I would say nothing more than an inch of water. I mean, you can do that, but you stay extend an inch, then you think maybe two inches, maybe three inches. I'd stay away from that. And SUVs not much better in high water. The air intake systems nowadays, because of the aerodynamics, are a little bit lower on the car, and it doesn't take much to suck it up through there. As for insurance, flood damage typically covered under most auto policies, but double check your coverage. Make sure that if you need repairs, you are getting real replacement parts. Sometimes they want to use a non-OEM engine. If the vehicle's still underneath warranty, that voids that engine warranty for the customer. Back out here live in Taylor, Mark also cautioning people if they're interested in purchasing a car from a private seller within the next few weeks. Some may be hitting Craigslist that have water damage. You just need to be careful. You need to know the vehicle's entire history. We're live here tonight in Taylor. Hank Winchester, help me Hank. Yeah, some good advice there, Hank. All right, our coverage of the flooding is just getting started. Coming up here at 530, we're going to show you, unfortunately, how big rain events like this become prime time for scammers. And at six, what is and isn't covered by your homeowner's insurance when it comes to flooding. Also, we'll be checking back in with Ben a lot over the next 90 minutes of news here as the rain is expected to start picking up. And if you have to head out, you can take the radar along with you on the local forecasters app. It puts four live radar right in the palm of your hand and you can download it for free in your app store. Just search WDIV.
Now let's get to some breaking news just into our newsroom. Warren police are now confirming that former Macomb County Clerk Karen Spranger is now in custody. Spranger is facing felony larceny charges. She's accused of stealing more than $1,600 from an elderly woman who was in her care. Again, these are charges not related to her uh, tumultuous time as county clerk, uh, but these larceny charges now have her in custody at this hour. Two cars collide, sending one inches away from going into a building. Video from Sky 4 shows one car pinned against the building at Outer Drive in McNichols with a truck spun out just around the corner there. Right now, there's no word on what caused the crash or if anyone was injured. And on westbound I-94 in Dearborn, a crash involving a school bus slowed down traffic. Fortunately, no kids on the bus at the time, no one injured, but a truck and a bus collided. And as you can see, it ended up with the bus turned in the opposite direction of traffic. The truck lost its cab near the rotunda exit on I-94. Well, we are off and running on a busy Thursday. Here's defender Karen Drew. Busted, caught dumping their junk in local neighborhoods. We're taking your vehicle. We're tracking down the lawbreakers. Now we're headed to his work. You've got to see who's caught. And what else we find? The Defenders, coming up. Okay, Karen, and their son will never be forgotten. What Detroit police did today that brought the family of a fallen officer to tears. Jason. Two corrections officers here at the Macomb County Jail now facing charges themselves. We'll tell you why one of them quit before he could get fired.